go ahead and get right into this and begin this process that we have today of knowing ourselves more and being able to take in, take command of self and take self out of autopilot for a moment just to get things back on course. It's always cool to work with the cruise control and the autopilots when things are clear, but when you're going through turbulent waters, you may want to grab the wheel since you know how to steer things best. I also wanted to say thank you to the new beautiful faces that are in the chat. We'll see where it peaks out at today. Hopefully we can get over 90. That will be an indicator that we are, well, we expanded anyway, but that there's physical presence is expanding. And if not, we have all some work to do um, because I, I do see channels at times, you know, talking about massive meditation, worldwide meditation. And I noticed that those channels uh, have been going on for even some time and haven't been able to really get everyone into realizing the power of the collective meditations. However, uh, I can also say that when you just push play on a, I don't know, a 528 hertz track and, you know, you say some things in the background and you show a big picture of the globe and there's none of the beings that really live on the globe, I think that that would be the first issue. So here we are. All of us from all spaces in the cosmos, which uh, consecrates itself on this globe we're calling Earth. And we're all here together bringing the energy from our space, like we're standing in the gap for our countries and the times that they're dealing with and how they're processing that. And we're also, when we say holding space, what we mean is, is that we are the ones that when someone is trying to tap into a frequency outside of the chaos, you're that frequency. We found out for sure that when we say holding space, what it really means is, is that you're holding a frequency. Others can realize that frequency. Now, remember, that's what we were talking about before that. Since love, joy, happiness, the real deal, not the fake one, but love, joy, happiness is still on the mind, especially of many of the, the indigenous and many of the tribes that still connect with their families. And it's so strong that it allows us when we snap back into you know, our, our, our balance to be able to actually have that, those thoughts and have those situations happening in our own personal lives. So I want to make it very clear, okay? I want to make it very clear that we hold the space. We hold it through frequencies. In the frequencies are multiple actions in a certain spectrum, right? So when we're holding a space, we're holding a spectrum, and all these different actions are taking place. Every single action uh is in place so let me give let me take it a, uh, give it a moment and just see um i just want to know on the secret energy tv in is it clear also you know what i have a, a direct recording of this too um and so i'm just going to keep rolling with this because these other stations and what they got with their interruptions i'll just have to let that that uh keep going but this stream is clear and if something happens on this stream with the zoom that's when I want to know, you know, something's going on because there's still 73 of us. There's space for 300 of us. So this means that we don't even have to pull over to YouTube, Facebook and all the rest of them. And I'm also saying that if you're on those stations, there is a slight lack. <laughs> you know, you're kind of in the in the tailwind of it. If you want to ride it, which is, you know, your own energy, your own current, get onto the Zoom and we're going to Zoom, Zoom out of here. And you can leave all of the, the delays and the lags and the buffering and all that behind. So with that being said, I was talking about, or, or actually beyond talking, I was giving you a picture of what, it is, what is a spectrum and what, it, what does it mean to hold space. Now, when I say every single activity is going on, let's just take the activity of intercourse, okay? Some believe that this is not done on the high levels, that there's no communion, conjugation, or whatever. Some believe that it is. I will tell you that every single thing that you see going on on every single level is also taking place on all of the levels, but at the degrees, measures, energetics of that space. So when you rise into a higher space in your consciousness, you have the same activities going on. They're just of a higher grade. Okay, so I trust that that makes sense. And with that dialing in, what I want us to take a look at very briefly is why it was important for us to actually figure out these vibrations and frequencies and 
because what would happen is, is I would listen to this kind of stuff on, let's say, um, somebody's uh, video about 528 hertz, how it really works and what it can really do for you. And, and it would talk about the body and how it heals and all this kind of stuff. But because, you know, having such a, my logical side is as strong as my spiritual side. So my logical side would be like, well, I, as you say, everything that you, it, everything that you're about is, and is the truth. Can you show it to me in some type of like, uh, some type of spectrum or logic of numbers or something like that? So that's what the logical mind would want. And I would entertain the logical mind as because I wouldn't be like, well, you're the one that determines whether I believe it or not. This is not a belief. I know this. But in my free time, I will go dig into some of this stuff and find out in the sciences and these other arts where exactly what we're talking about is. And so as this idea of these frequencies that change things and these vibrations that can do things started coming about, I started researching very deep and seeing after a while that man, we need some kind of universal system. The last person who was known to even really have a direct aspect of what each frequency really does was NASA. And I heard they published this paper accidentally over in, in, in one night, and in one night it was gone. It was on the website. It came out in a normal queue. And it was because they had to test every single frequency to see what it does so they'll know how things work outside of the vacuum. Now, for those who don't believe the people went to space and all that, this has nothing to do with that. We're talking about inside of the vacuum. And you can put yourself in the vacuum if you have a vacuum chamber. You can drop all of the frequencies on the entire planet. Hey, I'm getting a warning on my, my internet connection also. If anyone's on the internet, and uh, I would ask you here to uh, maybe go and ask somebody to make sure that their internets are not running. That would be great. So... Um, the astronauts, if you may, are just beings that know how to operate inside of a vacuum where there's no frequencies. And you can create things like the dodo ring where it's like a big, it's a frequency Faraday cage to where in that bubble, there's no frequencies. And then they watch how the body goes just limp. There's no motor skills. You get twitching. You'll get all this. And the mind would just go, like they said, you know, and when they were doing these experiments, which uh, UCLA conducted these experiments, that some people that were even left in that too long, like had an amnesia. They didn't seem to know who they were, what was going on. So they found it necessary for when they have someone inside the vacuum to put things in there. And they, they, they had these notes, put things in there like radios, any, they say any electronics from Earth because of the subset of frequencies inside these devices, even the old stuff like the TV. 60 hertz, et cetera, is enough for the body to recognize the frequency and the wavelength that it's from. And thus you maintain your cohesion, but motor skills are rapidly impaired. Okay, so this is coming right from the diagram of what happens when you remove frequ frequencies, period, from a person's space. So from here, then we know that since we all have all of these frequencies, we're holding the space here on earth and even the condition that it's actually in. And for others to get on different timelines, since time is a frequency, then they would need to just shift into a frequency. Now, this is hard to accept because there's a smear. It's like a, a nice fade from the barber. You don't really see the line. So because people don't really see the line of when they shift from one frequency or one world into another, many have this belief that that's not possible, that if something is happening, that's what's happening, and there's no way to get out of that. <laughs> And, they, and that's called being locked in a frequency. And this is also, there's many frequency cages here on the planet, right? So if someone is projecting a certain frequency, like I had to tell one of our brothers yesterday, he was like, nobody's commenting on my message. This is YouTube. It, it, it's, it's, it's all coming down. They're censoring everything, right? And it was a message about the Dean Koontz Wuhan book thing, which is old. I mean, Neva showed me that like when it first came out, it was like three weeks ago. He's just showing it today. And I said, brother, the problem is, is that you keep, making people like dial into this frequency that now it's like, okay, we already know what the frequency is about. How do we tune into something else? And if, if you're being a conduit for bringing that kind of energy in now, while at one point that was in, that was the thing, that was what we needed to do for each other. We need to inform each other. Now, just like that, you can be flip flopped into basically a trader or, or agent for them. But notice how in one time, this is why time is everything, frequency is everything. In one time, it was like, this is on point. 
brother is helping us. This is how we need to become aware. And then if that person is not in tune with what they're doing and realize and not get caught up into what everybody else is talking about and doing and the liking and all that, in that energy field and feeding off of that, when the next change comes, they got to be on point ready for the next change. Look, okay, time out for them. We already told everybody about them now enough proficiently. Now, we also said that the solution exists before the problem, or at least at the same time. So this means that we get then to a level of saying, okay, now I have to know, not believe, I have to know how this works. And because the mind is full of so many things or distracted by so many frequencies, you have to even repetitiously, like you have to study, basically. That's why you studied in school. You listen to certain songs over and over and over again. Now you know those songs. Now the brain even sings those songs by itself. So too, if you learn certain levels and laws about these metaphysical dynamics, your brain will just start doing that on itself. It'll take that as autopilot. So that was when I'm uh, a preluding why we have things like ineology and why we have things like the cosmic energy calendar. And again, these things are free. These things are there for you right now, and you can utilize them to get yourself into synchronicity. But what I'm going to explain to you today is, is going to give you a little bit more awareness on why that would become important now. So right here, what we're looking at first is we're looking at the Eneology website. That's at Eneology.com. That's E-N-N-E-A. L-O-G-Y.com, right? All right. I'm still getting some warnings on the signals, but everybody looks cool. So we looks like we all good. So I'll keep going. So, but first, before I go to Eneology, I'm going to go here. And I think this menu does work over here. Let's see, Cosmic Energy. And I just want you to see, and I went to that left menu, by the way, or right menu, excuse me, right here to Cosmic Energy. Many of you know this already. But again, it's so simple and so basic and so common, but common sense is not common. And so what happens is, is that some things that seem like it's just so small, so unbelievable that something like this could really do anything. That's just pretty much the story of this. It was never really complicated. It was already simplified by our ancestors unless we chose to mess it all up. And in this world right now, meaning that you have a perfect body unless you choose to mess it all up. That's what we're talking about. So the world is the same way. It was perfect. And then we chose what we want to do with it. And it's a good thing we have the spectrums and frequencies and vibrations because somebody already figured out, all of us basically, already have figured out how to keep this a space that we can all harmonize ourselves in, all agree this is an amazing place. This is a this is, I'm having a great experience. Yo, I'm glad you tried that out. That's, can you put a little bit of that over here? Wow, can you bring that presence? Wow, look at you. So all of that had already been figured out. So it, that's why it's like never as good as the first time. You know that saying, saying it's never as good as the first time? That's because like when they had set it in play, it's, you can't like overdo that. It's like smoking crack and then trying to get that high again to that height. It's, it's not going to happen. So the, but you have an option to go into the original, which is totally natural. So if you look at this, this is not just like, okay, well, let me just throw some stuff up here, like Agrippa's work or what they made Agrippa's work into. And many of the other cultures uh, had synchronistic systems. And then when it got repurposed as spiritual material, it not only lost its essence, many of the correspondences were screwed up. And that makes it very easy to confuse Basically, people about resonance and energy, especially if they're then told that this stuff is is outside of them. That is true, but it's the devil speaking with a forked tongue. A forked tongue meaning it's a paradox. It's true. It is outside of you, but it's also inside of you. And it's more important inside of you for sure than it will ever be outside. So what happens is like, let's say for today is Friday. So we have these colors. We have these vibrations and we have these frequencies and we have these elements and we have this space. And when you look into occultism for a long time, we had to go more and more with this. This would literally have 50 things if I listed all of what we know about this particular planet and this particular energy and what it's been doing on the planet. Now, but and more importantly, what it's doing inside of the body. 
Okay, so if we said, okay, on Wednesday, we needed to get into balance and, and balance this energy, transmute some things with the Kadesha staff, and then we said Thursday, that big guru being full off of all this energy needed to really get to another stage of its own consciousness by realizing how to get rid of things, but in a way where we don't think, in a way that we don't get rid of them, because you can't get rid of anything as the all, as we discussed, right? So what we said is that Jupiter is a big planet. It's a gas giant, okay? Thor, as they call it, the big, the big one. And in fact, a lot of this energy that you're seeing coming up right now is all the Jupiterian aspects of what has been going on in occultism inside of many of the secret societies. And that, fine, that bigness finally becoming too much. Because yes, fruit, be fruitful and multiply, but that doesn't just mean children. That doesn't just mean babies. It also means in your ideas, in your energetic field. And so because this, these cultures, many of them have been sexualized, all the energy has been coming out of the certain chakra to produce physical results immediately, which is basically bringing children into the world. So we have all of these, these, these young children, and now we have then a vibration that is basically confused and I'm getting to something here. So if we have a lot of children in the world, and this now, you got 40-year-old children now, 50-year-old children, and the vibration is confused, now the next plane is not really established. And so this is also like a blank sheet. It's a perfect time for us to go in on ourselves and reestablish those foundations and those pillars. I kind of got a little off track here, but I got some other stuff going on in the background, but I'll keep going with this. So we were talking about the vibrations and we were talking about the frequencies. And what I was saying is, is that this is inside of you versus outside. And when you understand Friday, that's what we were talking about. I got so big in there with Jupiter that I kind of even lost kilter from the weight. <laughs> Meaning that so many things now have been known and learned and philosophized in the world that now it's having a hard time balancing it. <laughs> Jupiter is having a hard time staying balanced with all this fat all this, all this baby fat, that's what we could get to here because that is the uh, essence of the planet Jupiter is the fat in your body. So all this baby fat, lack the frequency, now needs to actually come into shape, okay? That's what I'm saying. This is a story, and this story is going to go on forever. I could get in here every single day and give you another variant of each of these energies coming through and how that comes through in our space and how the story goes together. Any story that's ever won a Grammy or Oscar has only majority of these components in it because that resonates with someone. They say that was a good movie. Like they try to write books, how to create a great story, the protagonist, the antagonist. But those are all actually within the days of the week and the energies of the days of the week and most refined there. OK, so when we talk about Thursday, now we say, OK, this this lethargic behavior is now got us sick, which is Jupiter's main thing. Jupiter being jovial, but being very heavy set ends up getting sick after a while because of all of this abundance. Imagine getting sick on abundance. People think that you just get sick when when it's scarcity. No, you can. Once you get too much money, you get another sickness. If you don't know how to to channel and redistribute that energy, you get another sickness. You hold what wants to be free. You hold the liberty goddess. And that's actually where we're at right now. So my notes were paraphrased, which I don't have anywhere. I'm not even looking at them. My notes were paraphrased to speak first on, well, what is immunity? Because immunity is coming up right now a lot. People are wondering, how am I going to get my immune system straight? I know that that's the key to this. You know, this is where they're at now. I really do prefer people washing their hands, to be honest, and sanitizing themselves because, you know, while many of us may have our stuff in order and clean, some are still filthy. And that's what I was saying, because when we blend animals with the genetics and DNA, the animals don't have that, you know, that that uh, evolution, as it's called, the cleansing you know, all of the stuff that you do to, to, you know, get yourself into another frequency, which is a smell. That's why frankincense, oils are burned to change the smell. You know, you clean your body, hygiene, you clean the corners of the wall where the entities and, and things, vibrations and frequencies hide, right? And then you make the whole temple clean and that brings it into a higher resonance and a higher vibration, right? Like I think drilling in on this point of why these elements here are so important and so vital. So when we think about the immunity, what we start realizing is so the immunity is like when you cut yourself, 
you don't really see how throw this on real quick. When you cut yourself, you don't really see how it heals back together. Like you don't see the blood cells coming all together. They told you about that, but you don't really see it that way. You just see it coming back together, it healing. Three days later, it's done. So we can say then that immunity is this invisible force that's inside of us that repairs when something is wrong. So what is compromised immunity? We believe in vibratory energetics that you can actually go from the physical, let's say you could try to tackle the diets and the food. You can go to the mental, really start you know, seeing what you could do with your mind, and you could go to the spiritual, and you could still cause an effect in each of those. So on the, on the physical, so, so physical immunity, you could attack that by trying to you know, put certain elements, colloidal silvers, all this kind of thing, but you could also corner it by going into the mental state. Give me just a second here. There it is. Just going into the mental state and bringing a certain level of immunity by bringing yourself into the awareness and presence of self. That's the meditation we're going to have here in a moment. Another level of immunity is to realize that mentally, and some, and which bleeds over into spiritually, you may have been hurt. You may have had things that you had aligned yourself with pledged allegiance to, and then it totally failed you. Man, that sounds like the U.S. situation. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Okay, so on the flag, there are 50, I guess, pentagrams, which is Friday's thing. Friday's Inanna, Ashira, Ishtar, Ninurta, Isis. Like, I could go, man, you just spawn tons of names. Like all the children that you see around right now in certain, certain linguistic structures, all their names all mean the same goddess. Statue of Liberty, as we talked about, is Friday. Right? And this goddess is a goddess of abundance, love, and war. Now, how did those two come together? Well, where you yin, where you yang. If you love, then you war. Some people don't get that. They're like, no, brother, I, uh, I don't feel that. Yeah, because you're only feeling half of yourself. You don't realize when you truly love something and someone wants to take it away from you, what you go to next. You go to war. By all means, by this allegiance, I'm about to slam you with 50 pentagrams of power, which is quite a bit. That's like kilotons. Like we said, tetragrammatons of power. Right. In that allegiance, if something is against this. OK, so that that's what you have to see as a subset, because they're all, they're only pretenders. They're just trying to pretend what they understand that these ancient laws are really about with these entities. So when the when this goddess, if you may, she's a daughter, a princess, if you may, because that's getting you away from realizing that this is not the mother you're dealing with or the grandmother that you're dealing with. You're dealing with a young upstart. A goddess who did not have a name. Back in the times of our ancestors, you needed to make a name. <laughs> you need to make your vibration. You need to make your frequency and you need to be that. And that's how you came up. And if you, if you did not have that, then no one knew you in the stars. So this particular goddess rolls her way all the way up through the stars with every single form and fashion and craft that she learned. And she started from the bottom. So that's why it does have a lot to do with witchcraft. It does have a lot to do with commanding demons. Because that is the space that she was from initially as she made her ascent all the way to the king of heaven. Got him drunk symbolically off of the essence and the fumes and the beauty and stole the name. <laughs> And which was the child in the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. That is it is a child. The children are gods. So she took the name and she was with child. And I have this whole story in the meditation inside of ambassador training. I will be releasing those soon as we're working now on genealogy. She was with child. And then when she left the child, it's like the movie. Uh, um, what was that? The, was that Snow White? 
who was the chick that <laughs> she basically uh uh I know, okay, that's that's not that boy. But anyway, she's the one that after 12 o'clock lost the slippers. She was all there dancing. The prince was loving her. They kissed. And then after 12 o'clock, the magic ran out and then she was out of there. Well, that story is being taken from an ancient story about Inanna actually getting into the bedroom of the king, getting pregnant with the child, and then taking that child and going back to the, to the lower world to have that child because that was how one would fortify dominion. If you are with child from the king, and I'm only giving you a, give, I'm giving you a, a story that you understand in English. If you have a child from the sun and you go to the lower kingdoms, now this son is eventually going to be king. And that's actually the messianic story. OK, now, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing all this to you, because I want you to realize that this is not just as on the surface as these elements that you see here only, even though they do hold all the power, the copper. Right. And these colors, this is all about the essence, the rose as in Rosicutions. This was what all this about the copal that the Mayans were burning. This is the pentagram of the flag of the Mayans. This is the energy. This is the semen. This is the reproductive systems. This is the cheek, the eyes, you know, the, 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 all of that is corresponding to this. But it's most important also to understand the subset, because, again, many of us are consecrated on on these paths, but we are really everything. And that's what I'm working to get it, people to understand also is that we're not trying to tunnel you into one particular personality, but you need a foothold. You need to know what the cosmos designated you as so you can calibrate your synchronicities and things, and then you can move on to other paths. So the allegiant, as we know her as, in this path is here, and there's overviews of the characteristics with this path. And I'm only using this today really briefly, and um, I'm almost done here for the meditation, to actually highlight, because you have to go here and read this yourself if you're interested, to highlight that this is a path that is dedic a dedicated path, okay? Many people are also ruled by Venus. Their, their zodiac signs are ruled by Venus, so this does apply to your subset also. There's, there's deep knowledge in eneology. And what happened is, is that, and also everybody has a, a, a portion inside of them uh, of this. There's a chakra, a heart center. There's a place for all of this inside the body. So it's also directly tied into your immune system because your immune system is responsible for basically fighting off germs. So who better to fight off a germ than one who knows all the germs, <laughs> one who has already figured out how to cleanse because they're carrying the sun, one that all, all of those things have been gained. So remember though, the ascent of an entity or a God, if you may, is the ascent of yourself, but it's a st same story as you. It goes on in a process. So it's the, in the universe, all the lessons are, the, are is this and the stages in which these things reach inside of you. So if you're in the betrayed stage of Inanna's ascent, because that also happened in the story when she proclaimed to the kingdom that she had the child of the king, the queens were like, oh, no, this is not coming out. She cannot. Uh, uh. And they worked in their covens with powers to thwart that son coming to birth. And those are the those are the wars of Horus and Set. All of those scriptures that talk about elder gods fighting with the younger god to keep him down or her down. In fact, also remember words like Yeshua. Anytime you put Ah on the back of something, it does feminize it. Okay, so this real messiahship seems to be more of a female than it is a male. I know that's a head crack, but turn it all 180 degrees back upright because evil is turned up good 180 degrees upside down. That's an upside down pentagram. You turn it again 180 degrees, now it is upright and it stands straight, right? That is the secret to the mystery so that the Messiah was really a female. So Venus, that's why you still see in the societies today, that was more of the Messiah kind of role, coming from the bottom and then going all the way to the top, right? Working your way through the top. And then the zigzag of the, of the Sephirath, which is all these different things. This is not, this is a story of the in-depth story of woman, 
Like they say, all even the prostitution, the abuse, the betrayal, the love, the passion, the essence, the beauty, the pain, the fears, all of those things are all embodied into this. OK, so what I'm telling you now, then, is that how you work on healing yourself and you work on actually getting yourself stronger in this space is you come to realize these stories and how they play out inside of you. And then what you have the opportunity to do is you have the opportunity to say, OK, Yes, I've been through this kind of situation in my life. And because of that, that has made me a bit imbalanced. It has made me, as far as on an immune level, weak. Because, see, your subconscious mind is, is controlling everything. Your subconscious mind is the one saying, hey, you have a cut on your finger. It needs to be healed and sending in the proper things to heal it. So if your subconscious mind also knows that it's taken some damage because what it pledged its allegiance to, what it thought was going to save it from everything now ends up leaving it with child. <laughs> now those burdens ensue. And if the, if, the, if the demonic aspects start coming into the consciousness again, meaning like, well, let's go get magic. Let's go and, and do, let's go do dark magic. Let's, by any means less necessary, let's pick up these, these, uh, these guns, with, which is L and Saturn. Let's go and rob somebody for these talismans, which are dead presidents, which, are necro, which is necromancy, right? And then you get caught up in that vibration. <laughs> Remember, we are holding space and whatever space you're holding is the space that you are in. And more and more, it will try to infringe on your territory as your war is lost because your goddess is bound. Meaning that when you don't let the energy free, which is the current, doll R, doll R, the doll. When you don't let it free and when you don't plant it properly, what ends up happening is, is that it becomes locked down. This actually gets us into tomorrow, which is Saturn, because Saturn is the ruler responsible for locking it down. And the most negative aspects of Saturn is actually a pimp. That's why the most negative aspects or distorted aspects of Venus is actually a prostitute. And all the way up to whatever you can think, that is the whole ladder and spectrum of the path. So you have to decide then what path did you walk? What was the end up story? Did, did your son end up becoming now the ruler? And did he rule justly better than the unjust king? Because we always can improve things. Or did you get totally betrayed, taken in a taxi cab back to the lower realm, and then now check her, check her, check the cab back into the lower realm, back into duality, and now it is you got to get it how you live again. As if that's going to work, as if that's going to produce any different results than what you already see if you've been if you're doing that or if you've done that before. So this is the type of wisdom that actually changes things because it dials right directly into where you're at. And also it lets you know it, this is not foreign. This is not exclusive to you. This has happened to every person in every shape, form and fashion of their vibration. So with that and graduating with that, you realize now let's bring that energy in front of us. If we felt betrayed, we felt damaged. We came all the way from the bottom of this to get to another stage. The stage we found out was being blocked. We got haters all over the place, but we refuse to lose. We have the name and that's all you really need. <laughs> You have the power, the ineffable essence of yourself. You know the wisdom of vibration and frequencies, which is that of the Magi. You know the stars within, which is that of the scenes. And now you got to put all that into play in 2020. And it is as simple as going through these different subsets in the consciousness, these paths, these powers seeing how they've been debilitated because that is a big thing in the earth is to actually debilitate human beings, to remove their powers, to take out their stingers, right? And so what happens is, is that you need to reestablish these components and the ownership of these components to heal yourself. And that's what this is about, hygiene, heal yourself, hygiene, heal yourself. If you clean in the external space, this helps clean out the corners, light up some incense, run some stuff out of the space, set up like, you know, set space, set your guardian, set your gates, right? Strengthen your gates, right? And then all that that's done through these different levels. And then now also see this story. 
and realize that this story is yours, bringing yourself into the presence is going to allow you to take yourself to the next level. Lastly, yesterday, I got a chance to get in the build again, and which is the journey. And as I'm in the journey and realizing just how comfortable and relaxed the space is in deep nature, you start realizing just the whole qualm here about if you don't have that space available to you, setting that as an intention to be able to have spaces in deep nature. So that way, when you're contrasting the situation that's happening right now versus nature and the peaceful serenity and the beauty that's there, you can start basically convincing your mind that that is where you would rather be. Believe it or not, that's what the, that's what the matrix actually is, the fake matrix. The fake matrix is everything taken from nature and digitized in some way or programmed in some way. So woman is even programmed to do certain things that nature has, you know, the red lipstick and all these different things and to be a little bit like nature, but totally mislead, let's say, the male because he may now go back into the matrix and try to make money in order to maintain all of that with her and to maintain popularity. Versus in nature, you'll see all the beauty, but when you put a rose down in front of nature, nature laughs. <laughs> Silly, those are mine. How can you give me something that is already mine? Just relax. <laughs> it's like you can't, you can't bring anything here. You're not contributing to the existence of this being. You're respecting this being. That's also what Friday embodies. You're not just trying to conquistador and take her off and drag her off. on the, You know, now she's over the back and you're going to take her to your cave like an ogre, like they show in a lot of these movies. You're not trying to do that with this energy. This is Venus we're talking about again. What we're working to do here is actually to let it free. That was the name of this goddess also, free. And to let it flow, because why? She coming back. Oh, she coming back. I'm telling you, the ones that let her go is the ones that see her the most. The ones that hold on to her, watch her beauty wither. So too, all their warrior-like structures will also wither because they won't have something that gives them passion. This is how the story is entwined. That's why you have to go into nature and then deprogram from it's the phone. I go through this too. I've been through all this. You be in the phone with, in nature with the phone. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're working on it. We're working on it. And then as the situation outside in the fake matrix zone, you start realizing the metaphors, like the lady in the red dress inside of the matrix now. That was Venus, but completely externalized. All the red lipstick and then the red dress and walking around enticing all the men in front of business buildings and Wall Street and all this saying, hey, come and just... You know, to get me, you need to progress in that system versus the truth is, is to really get her. You need to be able to understand nature to get her is to understand her wisdom, not to confine her. That's how the linguistic system is all twisted. But when you want to untwist it, you only need to know the archetypes. So I mentioned all this to let you know that when I was looking at these frequencies and these things that was being talked about by uh, these metaphysicists on the internet, what I still found is that they were void of any real plans. And then what I mean, like an actual blueprint, can, can we, where can we see this? Because surely we're not the first to discover it. There's a lot of conceit happening with this idea that we're introducing something new. I don't think we've actually gotten to that frequency yet. It's coming where it'll be new to us what we experience. But still, this has already really been done. We're in the stardust still. So to get forward with this, we need to adapt the original system so that we can gain our anchor points here and then realize how this is playing out inside of us. And then when we need something, we can just call it in directly from the source. No Eve angels. Eve angels nowadays, it's an order of magnitude. So it's like the things you have plugged in. And this was the last part of the notes. The order of how you have things plugged in. Okay? Unlike how electricity works where you can plug into every socket and get about the same voltage if you need it. This works where the first thing you plug in gets the most of your voltage. And then the second thing that's plugged in behind that and then behind that and behind that, and that creates a chain ad infinitum. 
So what I'm saying is, is that if your primary source of energy is a person, as I was telling you yesterday, they're going to fail. There's not enough energy inside of a person to sustain the vibratory frequencies we need to get to. You need to unplug from that source and plug into a new source. It's not that anything is wrong because once, meaning that you didn't do anything wrong, this is just now in time, you have to change things up. So you unplug from that source, plug into the main source, grab that cord, and then plug it in back into you, okay? If that makes sense. So you're gonna make sure that there's nothing in between you and the main source, which is you and yourself and your dialogue going on between you about your, your growth and your progress and the voices that you get back from your guides. That is always first. And then mother, brother, sisters, uncles, lovers, babies, I don't care. <laughs> Anything that has manifested exter itself on the external level, even though it does have a spiritual correspondence, should not come first than the power source. Right now, you're standing on the power source. They've already been able to prove if you put your feet on the ground, it charges your body. I mean, like they need to prove that to you. You knew that already. So when I was laying in last night, I'm glad I got a chance to get to this and I'm done. I was, I was laying there on the rock, dialing in the space and the vibration and the frequency. I had to spend about an hour and a half doing this as I keep concentrating the space and forcing myself to be there until it's completely natural, that way it works into the regimen. So I'm there, I'm not, I don't wanna go anywhere, I'm not thinking about anything in the matrix, I'm not doing any stuff, I'm, I'm there, and I'm feeling the power of, let's say, the, being a, a, a native, indigenous, whatever you wanna call it, being grounded in, in, in a child of this beauty. And as I'm there with a smile on my face, it says, you see that tree? because I was laying on my back. So I'm looking up into the trees and I see this tree. It's like only this thick, literally like this thick. And it's way up there. And it said, what do you think is in this soil to make a tree grow so high? Now, again, this doesn't just come out as a question. It comes across as like, a statement. It's not, it's not, it doesn't come across as a, a question. I'll say that again. It, it comes across as a statement, even though it's phrased like a question. And as I soaked into that level of awareness, I realized that was also our story. Because when I first started my vibratory journey and I was in between all these stones, it started getting really dark for a moment. It dense. I felt like I was in the catacombs. I felt like all the rocks were skulls and that there was so much you know, this, this vibration and this soil and this stank and all this. And I really felt that energy and it was real. In the end of the journey, I began to love more and more that energy because I realized that it has so much power to make things grow so high. We just have to be aware of that. We have to dial into that frequency. So I'm going to have my brother, I'm going to line up this, uh, this camera system that we have going on here. I'm going to have my brother, Manvita, come forth, and he's going to bring us into a meditation of presence. And um, it is now time, of course, for us to rouse ourselves. I know I've you know, jumped into the meditation in the past very fast, but in, without moment's notice. So I am giving one, everyone the opportunity to, um, if you don't have your camera on, to turn it on. Looks like we hit 135 today. Congratulations. I won't check anymore. That's enough for me. It's happening, meaning it's actually growing and we're stabilizing. Also, let me get this up on the screen. Um, let me test his sound very briefly, brother. If you want to come through and say wholeness, that'd be good. That way I can see exactly where your levels are at. How's this sounding? That sound good. Okay, good, brother. So you're on point. Awesome. So let me go ahead and line up the screen. <laughs> also, Tribe, is great to see you once again. You know, I went in today, you know, just going right into what was on my heart, literally, and um, making sure that I connect with Tribe about how it all really works. And also to answer those deeper questions, how to get your immunity together and how to get the forgiveness going on inside of yourself by realizing the power of your story and even how your story becomes greater because you overcome it, how you're, you're from a space where you're already familiar with everything that's the negative one. <laughs> they think they're scaring you with all this kind of stuff. You're acting. 
We've already come from a place that actually has the worst it could ever be. And we grew from that. And we'll keep growing and we'll keep getting stronger. We won't get weaker. And even, like I said, when they when we pass on, because everybody going to leave this joker. I don't care what you say. I'm glad. Like, at some point, this does have to be over. We're like, yo, time out of this. I'll be taking it into another space. And I'll be on this vibration and frequency that'll be greater than this because I won't have the governor. Right now, I'm in school. You're in school. You have the governor. That's what organs really are. Lord governor. That, that's what they're doing. They're governing the frequencies. When you leave up out of here, they were like, all right, you got the car now. Let's see if you know how to drive. So turn up, you know, get ready to turn this energy up and, and always be strong within yourself. I'm noticing lately that, you know, sometimes I realize you got to be strong against distraction because even like right now, you know, some folks move around. There's some dude up there ripping up the grass and stuff like that. And I'm, I, I was like, I told them that um, this is where the second processor is going. I told him to be quiet. I just told him for one hour I needed to be quiet. And it's interrupting my whole flow. And I realized that, man, muscle buddy out of here. Like, get, man, get out of my mind. I don't care what he's doing. If he's chopping something down, I'm about to get louder then. You have to be like that in this. Every time they turn it up, I'm turning it up even more. Play with me. I'm sure you will desist because I'm rolling with the energy that controls everything. That's what you have to know about yourself. But to truly know it, maybe you need to put it into practice and study it if it just doesn't come to you right away because that's what deprogramming is. So here we go. 